joining us for this episode of Recipe Share, a program on AADL-TV where we take a few minutes to talk about recipes in a featured category. Today's category is Creative Combinations. I'm Elizabeth, and as usual, I'm joined by Beth and Katie to tell us about their recipes. So Beth, tell us about your creative combination. Oh, well, thank you, Elizabeth. Um, my creative combination I found in it was a new book and I had to give it back. It's called Everyday Cake. And um, it was and uh, every it was a cute little book. And it caught my eye because this was a pumpkin, roasted pumpkin spice cake with a tahini glaze. Ooh. Right? And I never I never heard of thought of using tahini in a glaze or in a sweet well yeah not really no I always use it in savory stuff when I googled that though the concept it seemed to be prevalent but for me I thought it was creative combination so and I had a uh, roasted pumpkin uh, puree in my freezer from the fall uh, so I was able to use that uh, it, it took a lot of uh, spices I gotta go back to my photo <clears throat> um cardamom was one uh cinnamon i just here we go um cloves okay and i'm not a fan of cloves i did use the um let's see it's called for half a teaspoon of cloves which i did the first one i made it twice i made two of them and one i didn't add quite as much and i, I liked that better but I don't know. It's weird about my clove thing, but uh, so it's got um, nutmeg and ginger, some salt, and you make your you make your uh, cake. And it looks really like uh, pumpkin bread. I mean, it's in a loaf pan, okay. Mm -hmm. And um, I do have a picture, and it's very pretty uh, because once you make your your cake or whatever you want to call it. By the way, I, I was just looking up um, pumpkin bread to compare, you know, those, what might have made it different. And that's what I was checking while I was with Katie. And um, this only has a half a cup of sugar. And the one pumpkin bread I looked at had like two cups of sugar. So I don't know. They're all different. But anyway, it's super moist because of the, the pumpkin itself. But anyway, and then the glaze, powdered sugar heavy cream or milk. It turned out I had some heavy cream, but I would have normally used like coconut milk probably. Um, four teaspoons of tahini. I used more than that. Um, maple syrup, or you can use honey. I did use maple syrup, a pinch of kosher salt. You mix that together. And then once the cake is cooled, you, gl you glaze it. Um, and then the really cool part though, is you add pepitas and sesame seeds to the top so it has this nice little crunch and a little bit of salt and and I did not have black sesame seeds but I had nigella seeds but really it wouldn't have mattered at all uh but it was really tasty and really different and I would definitely make it again I've got the puree in my freezer so there we go yeah, that sounds great. And it definitely a creative combination to me. I would not have put tahini and pumpkin together and I would not have thought of tahini as an accompaniment to anything like sweet, really. So um, really cool idea. Yeah, I, I would say, you know, that's a really easy thing to whip up if you feel like you have something that needs a little extra. Um, I would recommend using the tahini for something sweet too. Yeah, that sounds really good. I love tahini. And now I'm thinking like maybe like on a carrot cake cupcake or something like that could be nice. really tasty. Uh, so yeah, thanks for bringing that. That's uh, that's awesome and very creative. And also with the seeds on top, I think that that yes. adds another, like you wouldn't expect a crunch with exactly. that. So I think you've got all sorts of uh, cool combinations going on there. Very, yeah, very neat. Those 
Thank you. I'm uh, that's why I was excited to share it. Yeah, with cool. You all. So, all right, Katie, what kind of creative combination did you have with, for us? Okay. So my recipe is from this book. It's called Feed These People Slam Dunk Recipes for Your Crew by Jen Hatmaker. Um, this is actually the second time that I've checked this book out because I love it so much. I love this cookbook. It's really cool. She's so funny. Like I could see sitting down and reading this book cover to cover and it being almost like a humor memoir. It's just really interesting the way that it's written and the way that she writes out her recipes. It's just funny. The whole thing makes me giggle and her recipes are very creative too. So I highly suggest checking this book out. It's really cool. Um, but the recipe that I chose and that I made is for potato chip, bacon, and raspberry grilled cheese. This is a picture of her decadent version of this sandwich. Um, so the, you know, the potato chip, bacon, Raspberry is an interesting combination to me, but there's lots going on in here too. So it starts out where you make this mixture of butter and mayo, and that combination is your spread for your the outer bit of your grilled cheese. So once you've mixed all that together, then you take sourdough bread and you put a layer of raspberry jam and then a layer of kettle chips and then a layer of bacon and then another layer of raspberry jam on the other side of the sourdough and you smash it all together to get it like a little bit thinner oh geez i forgot the cheese <laughs> it's it's shredded gruyere in there so it's a uh, it's a uh, nice like you could definitely use swiss too uh but i did find some shredded gruyere at the store so that's what i used um and you just grill it up. You know what a grilled cheese looks like when it's done. Uh, it looks, I have a picture of what mine looks like, which I will say is not as nice as the picture that I showed you in the cookbook. It looks like a grilled cheese. Um, but this was like, this was a super rich grilled cheese sandwich, as you can imagine, with the salty kettle chips, the raspberry jam, the Gruyere cheese, the sourdough, like the butter, the mayo, it's a lot happening here, but it was super tasty. I did really enjoy it. And I liked the, the chips on my sandwich, which I haven't done in a really long time. So that was kind of fun to have that texture in there. I will not make this like on the regular. <laughs> like, I love a grilled cheese, but this was like very involved and had a ton happening, but it was super fun to make. And, um, Maybe, maybe I will do it again, but I think you could play with the different elements too and like, and have a, your own creative combination sort of based on this. So it was a fun recipe. Yeah, that is fun. Did the chips stay crunchy or did they soften? They stayed crunchy because you don't That's have, cool. you, know, you don't cook it all that long for them to right. soften. Okay. Right. Yeah. You know, I just remembered I'm supposed to cook up a bunch of bacon because it's going to go, we haven't been eating it. So yeah, that sounds, yeah. and I have Gruyere cheese mm. or some other thing I was doing, so. I would suggest throwing a little bit of like fruit jam on there just to like get that sort of, the sweet taste was kind of unexpected with the grilled cheese. And that's something that I might play with a little bit because you have the sweet and bacon, you know. It's, sure. Yeah. yeah, Kurt likes to do that a lot with his um, sweet, savory yeah. stuff. That sounds really yummy. But yeah, pretty involved. And also, um, so you just cream the mayo and butter together? Yes. And I'm glad you asked about that because um, that's something that I won't do again. So <laughs> I was like, okay, this is not worth it. Like, I, like, it's just like kind of a lot of prep work to cream these two things together when like, I think using butter or mayo would be yeah. basically yeah. the same exact result. Yeah. Well, do you use mayo ever? I see them advertise it. That's what I use because okay. I use that because I'm lazy and it's convenient. Because like if your butter it's... isn't soft enough or whatever, your mayo is always ready. So I am a mayo grilled cheese girl for sure. Cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay, Elizabeth, tell us about your creative combination. 
I will. Um, so this was kind of funny. I like, I didn't have an idea in my head for this. So I literally Googled creative food combinations. Okay. And some of them I did not think were very creative, like <laughs> watermelon and feta, like maybe that's creative, but I feel like that's become pretty common. Mm -hmm. Um, anyway, what one that I, that hadn't occurred to me, which maybe it has to you, but it was creative to me was, um, broccoli and avocado. Mm. Um, and so I found a recipe in Bon Appetit for grilled broccoli with avocado and sesame. And so this is pretty interesting. Um, first thing you do is you make some quick pickled jalapenos. So you take a half cup of rice vinegar, a quarter cup of dry white wine or water. I just used water. Um, three tablespoons of sugar, tablespoon of salt, and you bring that to a boil and then you pour it over um, three jalapenos that have been thinly sliced. And you just set that aside. It says for at least an hour, whatever, or up to a week. Um, I think I only did it for like 45 minutes because I was making this recipe, but so you quick pickle the jalapenos. Then you make this interesting they called it dressing. I would call it spread. You basically take um, a small avocado, a small garlic clove, a quarter cup of tahini, um, a teaspoon of finely grated lemon zest, four tablespoons of fresh lemon juice from the lemon, a third cup, a uh, third of a cup of cilantro leaves, and a few tablespoons of olive oil. And you put that in a food processor and blend it until smooth. Um, and it said you can add water to get the consistency that you want. And I did add a little bit of water because it was kind of thick. Mm -hmm. um, then you set that aside and you chop up um, your broccoli and half of a red onion. And again, you're supposed to put this on the grill, but I'm not gonna go out and grill in February. So I actually did a kind of saute and it, with a little bit of olive oil in a pan and it worked great. I got a really nice char. Uh, I didn't put in too much olive oil, just a drizzle. So I think I still got the nice, the nice char on the broccoli and the onion. Um, so that was great. Um, and then you take the spread and you kind of like spread it on a plate and put the broccoli and onion on top, squeeze the other half of the lemon over top of that, put the pickled jalapenos on. And then um, it said you could put on more cilantro, um, and some sesame seeds, if you would like. I have a photo here. It was very beautiful. This would be like a great side dish. Um, it was delicious. It was a bit involved between the pickled jalapenos and then making the, you know, spread and then the broccoli onion. So it's not something that I would necessarily do for a weeknight dinner. But I think if I was like, if I had guests over, this is like a great dish to like put on the table because it was bright and the flavors were great and the tahini avocado thing like I would make that spread again and like dip things in it um it was very delicious um yeah and I would look forward to trying this with the broccoli and onion actually on the grill um in the summer too so it was great um I'm gonna save this recipe because it was it was it was a, it was a good one sounds amazing it sounds so good. I definitely want to try it and I can't wait to see your picture. Yeah. Uh, I would not have like all of the ingredients sound like just like normal, 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 but I never would have put broccoli in the center of all of that. Like I would not have expected that. So that is definitely super creative to me. I don't usually throw broccoli in that flavor profile. So like, awesome. I'm, su I love broccoli. So yeah, super excited to try it. So yeah, I want to clarify though. Was it? Did you say you chopped the broccoli? So it's or so it the on the, yeah. So on the grill, it called to just like cut the broccoli head in half and like oh. place it. But since I was charring it in a pan, I put cut it into the florets. Um, gotcha. uh, so and then it called for after it was done on the grill, you were supposed to chop it anyway. Oh. So okay, I kind of pre-chopped it to throw it in the pan. Um, Yes. It sounds like you could make that spread ahead of time and use it for a lot of different things. Yeah, I loved it. I think the spread was definitely something that, and I haven't combined avocado and tahini before. I'm sure people oh, have, yeah. but it just hasn't occurred to me. Um, so it was great. Cool. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Sounds delicious. 
Um, thanks. Yeah, I'm excited to share my photo. Um, all right. Well, if we have no further comments, I want to say thank you for watching Recipe Share and be sure to click the link below at the event page on aadl.org to find the recipes we talked about and do feel free to share your own in the comments. Join us next time on Recipe Share when we will be talking about Take a Dip, recipes for dips. We are looking forward to seeing what you've been making, so thanks for sharing. Recipe Share, Recipe Share. Share a little recipe